Hello everyone, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions and I just got the new Runcam Eagle FPV camera in the mail. This is actually a sample though, it's not the final product but it was sent to me for review so thanks Runcam for sending me this camera and they also sent me a tote bag which I guess can double as a t-shirt or maybe you can use it as you know something when you're eating, I don't know, but it's pretty cool anyway and what I want to do with this camera is try it uh, under different conditions because it, it boasts a couple new features. One is global wide dynamic range so when you look up into the sun it's supposed to handle that as well as at sunset and sunrise when you're looking right into the sun it's supposed to allow the ground uh, to look pretty good. Um, also it's 16 by 9 so I want to try it with the V3 goggles and the the V3 goggles, which are the Dominator V3s from Fatshark. The Dominator V3 goggles have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio as well. So maybe this camera will be a good match for that since it's 16 by 9. Okay, a little bit about the Eagle. Here's the box right here. And as you can see, it has uh, 800 TV lines global wide dynamic range, a 16 by 9 format, and it has a power input of 5 to 17 volts, a field of view of 130 degrees, and it has NTSC or PAL. It's switchable between NTSC and PAL. I'll show you that later. Okay, now as far as what's in the box, the camera comes with three cables. The first one is a menu cable right here. And this is similar to the Swift or the Owl, where it has two plugs on the back. The menu cable plugs into one socket right here, so you can change the parameters for the camera. And then there's a second cable that runs off for your uh, video, voltage, and ground. And I've made up a little plug here for a JST connector on a battery that will plug right into here so I can power it for test purposes and you can make these cables yourself you just need one of these M type barrel connectors okay so that's the second cable the third cable is the FPV cable which plugs in the same place as the uh, video cable here and it plugs in there so you can hook this to your video transmitter or OSD whatever you're going to hook to it so those are the three cables now, as far as the hardware goes, you get a bracket and uh, some accessory screws and things and a little wrench. This bracket is different than the Owl or the Swift. I don't know if you remember when I did a review on the Swift or the Owl, but its bracket was more like this. It, it had one that you put two screws in and then you could swivel it and lock it down with a screw here. Well, this does the same thing but the two screws are closer together and they're right here on the case so it's more compact in that sense and the bracket just goes over it like this and you put one screw in to hold the bracket and one screw to hold the angle and it has a pretty good swing on it so if you're flying mini quads you can easily get the angle you want with this little bracket okay so there you go that's all of the hardware that came with it uh, now let's just take a brief look at the menus. Okay, I've got the camera in front of the monitor right now. There's the camera in my hand. I've got the menu button here. Uh, let's just do a quick latency test. Run my hand in front of it. I know it's not the most professional. But you can see it's very fast. Going down through there. The repetitions through the monitor. Okay, now let's look at the menu. Let me get the camera down here out of the way and we'll just look at the menu. So, now you notice the colors change because if you don't have enough light it goes to nighttime mode. So that's why it looks grayscale now. But anyway, we have the day night is an auto video standard. Now I wanted to talk about this. Uh, it's switchable between NTSC and PAL right here. So if you want to change that, you just click the menu to the right and it'll go and change it. It takes a moment to like restart and then it'll come back in PAL. So now it's in PAL. Now if I want to go back to NTSC 
I just move this little button here to the right and then it'll go back to NTSC. So now I'll press the button in the center to bring the menu back and there you are. So it has that ability to switch between NTSC which is 60 Hertz and PAL which is 50. If we go into image pressing the button to go in now you got your wide dynamic range you can turn that off. This has very wide dynamic range. They call it global wide dynamic range. Works very good. I'll show you that in the flight video a little bit later in the video. Just stay tuned for the flight video and you'll see how it works going into the sun and whatnot. Image enhance is one place you can change things and you go in there and you can change the sharpness and saturation. If you go in you can set it to manual or auto which is what it's on now. Now I don't know what these settings would be for this camera yet. It's too new. It's just a sample. So I'll find out later and maybe do another video on it. If I zoom... Oh it does actually zoom. You can zoom in and out with that. So that's interesting. Of course it's just cropping CMOS sensor area. So let's return and get out of the menu. That was just a brief overview of how it works. So this is a teardown of the Runcam Eagle camera. And this is the case right here. And this is the back cover plate that was held on by two screws. This is the control board here that was plugged into the sensor board. And it has the sockets for the cables on the back and a little piece of foam stickum to hold the board down. There's two screws that hold the sensor board into the case and this is a CMOS sensor. I actually went and measured the sensor and it was about 8 millimeters by 5 millimeters in size. Okay, so when you go to put it back into the case, uh, the CMOS sensor has to go in with the the plug for the control board at the bottom of the camera away from the label. And then you just drop it in there there's two screws in the corners and then you just plug the control board onto it and then put the back cover on with its two screws. So that's the teardown. So here are the Dominator V2 goggles right here and the Dominator V3 goggles over here. So let's take a look at how each one is affected by the 16 by 9 format of the Runcam Eagle. Let's start with the V3s. Okay, so starting with the V3s, Mike is going to take a look at the 16x9 format and see if it does indeed correct the stretchiness of the V3s. Okay, Mike's trying it with the Runcam Swift. Oh yeah, it does look stretched out. So the Runcam Swift, and this is probably going to be 90% of the cameras out there, FPV cameras, will make the image look stretched in the Dominator V3 goggles. Okay, now let's look at the Runcam Eagle and see if it corrects the problem. So does it look square compared to the other one? It okay. does. Very nice resolution. So Mike's wearing the V3s right there. The Dominator V3s from Fat Shark. And this camera is straightening out the stretchiness so that all the objects now look to be their true aspect ratio. So that's really cool. This will be good for the V3 users. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm going to have to get me one. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Oh, I got one. Okay, now let's look at the Dominator V2 and see how the Runcam Eagle affects it by its 16x9 format. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try the V2, Dominator V2, and it looks fine with the Swift. Everything looks square, you know, aspect ratio is right. Okay, now let's move on to trying the Eagle with the Dominator V2. Okay, now I'm looking at the Eagle camera and still through the V2 goggles and it looks sort of compressed from left to right. Wondering how the Runcam Eagle performs in low light conditions, just look at the upper left hand corner. That's the Eagle compared to the Owl on the right. It's very similar to the Owl much better than the HS1177 or the Runcam Swift. 
so I think this is going to be quite a contender for the FPV market. Now let's go look at some flight video and see how it performs in the sun. I'm getting ready to launch. I'm flying a geese. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Can you see anything? Oh yeah. Horizon mode. I heard something. See a bird right there. All right, see if I can see anything. Wow. All right. Where's that sun at? Where is the sun? Oh, okay. It's on the sun's... It's over this way, isn't it? Yeah. I don't really see it, but... Oh, Headed towards the house. What's that, John? Oh. It's a little snowy, picking up a little snow now and then. But other than that... I like the picture on this, on these V3s with this 16 by 9 camera. Yeah. Yeah, the Eagle really makes it look perfect. I mean, you get full use of your screen now. It doesn't look all squished. Yeah. What's that down the end there? Uh, I hope that's just trees. Oh yeah, that's just a little tree. Isn't it? And there's the sun. The sun's coming and going. That's part of the test here. It's a cloudy day with sun coming and going. Well, you might have to cut it short because you heard a thunder boomer coming our way. Now, is the sun towards the uh, clubhouse or is it towards... Is it... It's in between the clubhouse and the T over here. Oh. In the middle. Oh, okay. Oh, right over there, yeah. There's no way I can get pointed right at it. I mean, pointed right into it, but there it is. There's the clubhouse. Yeah, it handled that dynamic range business fine. Yeah. To me, this camera has a little bit of graininess to it. Uh, not bad, but I don't know if it's as clear as the other, but, you know, it's got more TV lines and stuff, so I don't know. That's. A... You think it looks good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe. I like the fan better on your goggles than on mine. Do you? Yeah, much, much better. I think mine, where they put that extra shield around it, they restricted the airflow. Mm. It's starting to fog up a little bit. Just aim over the sun. I'm aiming over the sun, pardon me, but just don't going towards the sun again just to get a little bit of that in. Because that's what everyone was questioning, the wide dynamic range. But really I don't see any change in the video contrast or brightness. It seems like the camera really handles this well. And the wide angle, this 130 degree angle, is perfect for these V3 goggles. I mean it really looks like CinemaScope. Yeah, well, a minute ago, I, I mean, when you got up and brought her in for a steep drop, it, that looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good video there, a good visual, I mean. Yeah. All right, coming in. Butterfly. Oh. I don't really. 80, going over our heads. There it is. All right, let's see if we can stop our DVRs at the same time. Are right. you ready? Three, two, one, go. Secure flight. 